yeah so this video the idea is we just wanted to do albums that were terrible so not bad albums by good bands just albums that are terrible and that should be an entertaining video only after we chose the albums I figured out it should have been so bad it's good albums as in stuff that's really funny and I think only two out of the four albums we chose do that so two of them are a fail I think and two of them success so that's what we'll do so let's start with Anvil I've mentioned Anvil before um I mean, there's, there's also a thing that this this I haven't felt like this for a long time, not since Camel, where I was sort of a bit. They're not so famous, and maybe they'll be watching, and I'll, I'll like won't like their album. Oh no! <laughs> and, but the, with this, it's you know, um, not all these these bands are massively massively successful. So you know, some of them are massively successful. And I don't care, you know, and they're fine. They'll be fine. But some of them aren't, and that feels a little bit bad. That these you know. They're, they're, maybe and Anvil are the example of that. Uh, we're doing the album Metal on Metal. <laughs> it's really, really funny metal. It is no album, and of course, a lot, I like it so much no album. It's not no album because it's not British. It's actually Canadian, but it is very much no album. Um, see, this is where it might be Kiss. But I think it's this. This is where the ridiculousness of the Black Album comes from. That that you know, that's that's not there in the other Metallica. It's just stupid. You know, it's like it's like a thirteen-year-old watching episodes of He-Man because he thinks it's like really yeah, I have the power. <laughs> and that and the and in so, in so many ways it's just generic metal, but it's ridiculous generic metal. It does sound just like bad news, but. The lack of self-awareness is the key ingredient, I think. What makes it funny? In that they think they're like the new Sabbath, but faster. Um, so it is like watching, you know, it's like a, like a, a really good B movie. You know, the the good B movies. It's not like Sharknado. They're kind of boring because they because it's knowing they know it's terrible. You know, best B movies are the ones where the, the person making it thinks they're making a good film, <laughs> and that and that's what happens here. You know, it's just so bad. And so ridiculous, and the vocals are terrible, and and just everything about it is just sort of heavy-handed and, and and obnoxious and and crap, and muddy production as well. Uh, but that's the thing: the music is funnier than bad news. You know, I'm sure they won't be able to make as funny TV, <laughs> but the music is funnier than bad news. There, um, there is a documentary, isn't there? Yes, yeah, they oh. did a Spinal Tap thing. Uh, I think about 2010. Oh, I guess. They? I think after some kind of monster, and it was very much in that vein. I think. I think that's where it came from, and it, it was like their last roll of the dice because um, they just disappeared. <laughs> now people talk about oh bad management and stuff like that, and I think it was Aerosmith's manager which started managing them in like eighty three, and that's when it just and they were they were supporting like Bon Jovi or Aerosmith and bands like that, and it was. <laughs> It's just never going to happen, you know, because they are metal in 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 the proper sense, you know. Um, so yeah, and they, and then they were just by the time of this documentary, they're playing clubs, um, which is they're lucky to be playing clubs, frankly. <laughs> they should be happy with that. But they, I I think because someone somewhere put up some money to make a movie, and Chris Sangrides, I don't pronounce his name, famous producer said, "Oh, this new stuff you're making sounds really good." He's, I don't think he really thought that. I think he's, he's been told to produce this album, so they did. Um, and they are still going, but it's just the one guy left, I think. I mean, and, and to be fair, some of it is just generic metal that's okay and not funny, apart from the vocals. I mean, I think Mothra is okay, and uh, any song about Mothra is awesome, you know? Uh, and it, it is down to taste. I mean, some of it is because it's rubbish. <laughs> It's, it is rubbish, but there is a Kiss thing. They are influenced by Kiss, and that's just not my thing. I just don't, you know. And I know Kiss are so highly regarded, but for me, they're not very good, you know. Um, and I think a lot of early thrash sounds like this, but because of the heaviness, they get away with it. This isn't really very heavy, and I think that's part of the problem. And it just brings out the absurdity of it, and and it's just bad. It's bad music. 
It's funny. Uh, I think I've had a slightly different take on it than you. Um, I put, I put, as soon as I put it on, it made me smile. I thought, <laughs> you know, this is... You could say it was bad, but I mean, I, 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 it smart, made me smile in a good way. You know, it wasn't sort of, oh, what? bunch of idiots or whatever it was actually this is this is all right i mean it's it's enjoyable put it that way um i mean i'm sure that was pretty heavy for the time this is 1982 yes i mean you had you did have thrashes around then but it was it was very cutting edge and very yeah, scary i stuff, mean you know? what i hear is this is sort of like the this is almost like a a meeting point of you got the poodle rock and you've got thrash yeah and they're both here yeah yeah, they're, yeah. Both, <laughs> they're both here yeah. um, and the sense I get from the music is actually they're, they're just enjoying what they're playing they're just they're just rocking out they're the, the sort of like the status quo of of heavy metal basically mm. now you can say Mickey out of status quo but I mean at the end of the day all they're doing is just having a good time on stage yeah status quo yeah. write good songs though they're good songwriters well occasionally they're, right. they're, they're, all, they're all the same they're all the same and, they're great songs yeah, yeah. Um, I actually, I, the, 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 what I actually compared them to was um, Iron Maiden. This, yeah, is the, yeah. this is the year that, Bruce Dickinson joined Iron Maiden, it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's, it, it is New Album. That's what that's the thing. It does sound like a New Album, but like, I mean, as I said yeah. before, there aren't many good ba- um, New Album bands. There's lots of New Album bands, but not many of them very good. <laughs> they all sound like that, but most of them are terrible. Well, put this like six six six, the final track. You've got the the Bruce Dickinson type vocals, the the falsetto, whatever. But actually, you've got Mothra, which is a pretty, pretty good rocky right. type song. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'd agree. Actually, yeah, Mothra is alright. Yeah. I think yeah. the March title the drew me in a lot. Though. March of the Crabs is a ridiculous title, <laughs> and there are no vocals, and it's quite short. But actually, thing, it's alright. The title. Are they serious? That's, That's the thing. It. I mean, are it, they it makes me feel like they're they're actually just having fun. Rocking out, yeah, yeah. But I, I, um, I, don't, I don't, I don't think they're self-aware, and I think that's why it works. That's it could be, yeah. Game. I mean, maybe, yeah. You don't have to be self-aware if you're just playing what what you like, sort of thing. Yeah, and people. And I get the genuine impression they're playing what they like. I don't think, probably because this is at the dawn of of, of thrash. So mm-hmm. you know, New Album is is coming to an end, and, and thrash is about to start. That this is supposed to be sort of like a juncture between the two, and therefore. These guys are supposed to be, I don't know, um, forward thinking or whatever, but they're not. Yeah, yeah. There's an expectation problem there. You know, they're <laughs> not in the category that people want to put them in. Yes. Um, yeah. What you said is much more accurate that it's poodle rock and 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 no bobbin mixed. Yeah. Which, I mean, technically that's supposed to be Def Leppard, but then Def Leppard aren't really no bobbin at all. They were just around at the time. You know. Uh. This is just I mean, bad music. I, I see. I, I mean, my impression of Iron Maiden. I mean, I know you. You know a lot more about this than me. Is that actually Iron Maiden are probably more like the status quo of. Yes, definitely. Of heavy metal. Very much so. Yeah, yeah. But I think they've sort of, they've taken that art. This this is where they could have gone. Really, they could have been sort of, that sort of thing. I mean, Mothra. That could easily be an Iron Maiden song. It could be a very early Maiden. It yeah. could. It could. It would have better melodies and things. <laughs> yeah, but, but what still, I'm saying it is, it's the kind of subject that I yeah stylistically Iron Maiden would, would go for that and six six six. Well, all of it really. I mean, well, they wouldn't have a song called Metal on Metal. <laughs> no, maybe not. Would they have March of the Crabs? I mean, that's <laughs> that's funny enough. I think that Bruce Dickinson probably get a kick out of it. Yeah. No, but um, it wouldn't be. It would be March of the, the Ides of March. Or, you yeah, know, it'd be something. Yeah, bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. So, Iron Maiden, without the bullshit, and, <laughs> you know, yeah, just a bit of fun, basically. I don't think this is a terrible album at all. I think we've reviewed a lot worse than this. <laughs> and actually, I'd listen to this above the. We did a Bruce Dickinson run, didn't we? Yes. I'd listen to this above any of those albums. Goodness me. Goodness me. This has <laughs> just died inside. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is terrible. I, I do think this is bad music. But I also think it's really funny. That's that's the thing. I, you know, I think there's we are meeting in the middle there actually. In the, you know. Yeah. You, you you know why I'm finding it hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. do. So, I do. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, and that's it. That's Anvil. So how many uh, poo emojis do we give it? I'm going to give it three poo emojis. So what? What? How does it work? So does? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. How many? How many emojis? I'm how giving six, it, like the eggs. Don't know yet. That's three because it's the first one, so it has no nothing. To, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Three. <laughs> three poo emojis. So what? 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 what amount of emojis? So is, <laughs> if it's so bad that it's good, how yeah. many poo emojis do you give it then? I don't know. <laughs> It doesn't matter, does it? I have no idea. I'm going to give it five poo emojis. Five poo emojis, excellent. <laughs> right, so we're going to the next album. Yeah, go on. Right, so. Uh, there was a couple of choices here. I was trying to think. What's what's just rubbish and stupid? And I, in my head, I came up with electronic sounds, which was the George Harrison messing around with, with his toys noises. And I decided, well, that is a shot at some proper avant-garde music. I think it's very good. You can say what you think of it in a minute, but I don't think it's very good. But at the same time, it is an attempt at proper avant-garde music, and that's fair enough. And you know, it's not. It shouldn't doesn't deserve in a list of things that are just crap. You know. And then my my mind went, yes, of course, John Lennon and Yoko Ono solo albums in the sixties are amazing. And the wedding, the one we're doing is the wedding album, <laughs> because okay, side one is twenty minutes of them saying John and Yoko at each other, and whilst recording their heartbeats for twenty minutes. <laughs> okay, side two called Amsterdam. I assume the interview is in Amsterdam because it's mostly an interview, and the occasional Yoko singing, uh, and John making silly noises. <laughs> And this is very much so bad it's good. In that this is really quite funny that they would put that out at all and not think it's just nonsense. It is very funny, this one, I think. Um, you would, you'd you feel bad if you paid for it, <laughs> I suppose. But, you know. And my... His, I, obviously, Yoko's coming from this pretentious arty background and she would take that seriously. I think you, you would expect her to be better at it. You know, but I I question whether John is taking it seriously. He goes very goons for some of it. It's always like towards the end of the John and Yoko thing, he starts saying saying it in a silly voice. Yoko, Yoko, you know, it's it's like you know my name. So I'm not entirely convinced. John is completely taking it seriously. Just remember, John is this is sixty nine, I think. So he's coming. I think he's kind of recovering from uh, the acid. He did. He did a Sid Barrett. You have to remember. He did a Sid, but he got out of it. So sixty-seven, sixty-eight. He 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 had destroyed his ego and, and wasn't. He had no sense of self and all that stuff. Whatever that is. And uh, so I assume at this point he's recovering, but basically just doing what Yoko says is is what people say. Um, but yeah, it is rubbish and really funny. Mm. Uh. <laughs> so, electric. Let's. I'll just start with electronic science briefly. Okay. okay yeah. Um, yeah, that is. It's an avant-garde thing, and it, they had an. They had a label specifically for it, didn't they? Called yeah. Zapple or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Zapple. Yeah. Yeah. And that was out on the Zapple album, and. A bit of controversy over it because one of the songs was supposed to, supposedly a demo by the guy who sold him the Moog. Oh, he yeah. didn't know it was recorded, um, and he was quite upset by it. Right. <laughs> Apparently, he came over to help him get it all set up and and record something, and he turned up and he turned out George record. Harrison was in hospital. Oh, see. I mean, right. Tonsil, his tonsils taken out, and no one at Apple knew he was coming. Right. So no one spoke to him. They were really um, suspicious of him. Yeah. Sort of thing. So him and his wife went to Paris and then George Harrison got out of hospital, summoned him back and then they, they, they recorded this thing. This, um, what's it called? Um, it's the, the Liverpool thing and it, the, the bridge. I can't remember what it's called now. Uh, under the Mersey Wall. That's right. it. Yeah. Whatever. Um, 
which was a crack at some avant-garde. And actually, I was highly, highly suspicious of it. I've got to be honest before, <laughs> before I listened to it. Um, but it did. I mean, avant-garde works when it sucks you in. Mm -hmm. you, you're like, you're frowning. Yeah. And it's jarring. It's but you can't look away. You can't turn away from it. You've got yeah. to do it. And it did that. It actually did that. There you go. The second, the second side, no, no time or space, which is supposedly the demo, um, actually had some good moments. You could, you, but you did get the sense there's maybe a bit of a demo in there. It's actually, it's a lot more three dimensional. It's like it's got a Z axis. So there's stuff that happens in the background, like right. things that sound like steps and yeah, and crickets and so. And then there's things that are right in your ears that really up front and and get get right. you going. So it, it's Probably. very. A very broad sound, so maybe it is demonstrating the the power of the whatever Rogue, it is something something yeah yeah. Um, but actually, there are moments that are that are very good. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, I was, I was pleasantly surprised. I had no idea what the wedding album was. Um, I wondered if it was on the same label and it was supposed to be avant garde. Um, I think it is on the same label. Is it? It's a Zappa one, yeah. Okay. Well, it's 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 just garbage. It is a, the most self-indulgent type of garbage. <laughs> it's just like, rubbish, isn't it? Yeah. The it's idea that anyone would actually pay money to listen to that crap, yeah, is is a little bit insulting, to be honest. It is. Yeah. Um. The Yoko and John thing. Oh, gee, it gets tired after ten seconds. Yeah. And, and it's twenty it's minutes. Like, it's 20 minutes of it. Yeah, because there's nothing else to do, so they might as well carry on. Yeah. What a load of crap. Like, let's let's go and record this shit yeah. and see if we can, you know. Yeah. If I'd actually, at the time, if I'd paid money for the album, I think I'd be putting a claim in for wear and tear on me bloody record player needle because mm. it's, it's, that, it's that much of a waste of time. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, the idea... Oh, and you know, you go to side two, which is the one with the interviews. Actually, the message in the interviews is something I, I, obviously, you know, I agree with. Yeah. It, he says something in there. It's very difficult. Um, they don't know how to handle humour uh, and peaceful humour, which is really good. Which is a really good point. Yeah. But it starts off with Yoko Ono singing some. Uh, and and, and Casey John's just going. Burp. In the background, <laughs> she's just singing "Let's Hope for Peace," and it just makes me want to go on a murderous rampage. It does. It's sort of completely yeah. counterproductive. Like yeah. it's sort of, yeah. it's demeaning the message of the album. Um, <laughs> this horrible noise she makes. It's sort horrible. of like if you want something to, you know, uh, hang your hat on as as why um, peace is is only for people who don't really have to have any responsibility in this or anything like that there it is and I'll just say well these are the kind of people that are advocating this crap <laughs> it's rubbish they're not Trying they're not in the real world selling this for money yeah it's garbage but, yeah um, so yeah I don't think it's so bad it's good um, <laughs> I think it's, it's just bad it's so bad it's offensive that, I mean the idea that Spotify are paying someone some micro pennies for me to listen to it yeah is is yeah. grounds for a class action lawsuit in my opinion I mean we should <laughs> it's not John or John's estate or Yoko I don't think we'll get that money no it'll be some else. some investment group or something like that there should be a button on Spotify which says erase from my listening history um, <laughs> because <laughs> embarrassment factor 10 <laughs> I've done in Anvil then I've gone to George Harrison Electronic Sounds <laughs> and then I've gone to the wedding album I mean what is Spotify what are you supposed to do <laughs> <laughs> well, the and, the, and the next two albums we're going to do as well on top of that yeah. Jesus. <laughs> uh, so yeah this gets one poo one, one poo. poo emoji from me it's five poo emojis because I, this this for me this fits the bill okay. I'm so bad it's good in that it is so funny it, but I mean now I've listened to, I have played the entire thing through in one oh, scene God. I wouldn't do that again but I would play it to other people <laughs> <laughs> Because it is it is crap, isn't it? That's the thing. That's what we were aiming for. And albums that are crap, and it is crap. It's yeah. not interesting. It's not avant garde. Record saying John and Yoko recording their own heartbeats will be self indulgent, even if they just recorded it for themselves. Yeah, you know. And if they did, fair enough. It's kind of a John and Yoko thing. But to sell it, 
<laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> That's just astonishing that they would even think of doing that. And I don't think John took it seriously at all. I think he's no. taken the piss, yeah. Right, that was that. <sighs> Ready? I'm sure you'll, you'll, you have much less of a problem with this than I do. Okay, this is where... Um, this is where it didn't work. Okay, I didn't get through this album. By the way, really? I couldn't. I didn't get to the end. I skipped a bit. I couldn't do it. Uh, this is Leisure by Blur. Oh. Okay, right. I hate it. <laughs> I really, really hate this. It is posing, patronising, pretentious, and posh. It is the ultimate social music. There, you know, there's nothing there, but we are part of this. We're having this party in 1989 or whatever it is, and that's the thing now. And there is nothing else there. And the the problem is, it isn't bad music. It's just exactly what I don't want to hear. Yeah, I'm sure it succeeds in what it sets out to do. So you know, it doesn't matter, does it? It is the po it is the, the anti prog. It's the polar opposite of prog in every way. In that they were fashionable and they had the right clothes and they were cool. And young, I, you know, I don't. I shouldn't say anti-musical because that doesn't mean anything, does it? But it, to me, that is not music. Well, it's not what music is about. It's not about notes and and, and melody and, and rhythm. It's not about any of that. It's about the noise of the trends. Um, horrible tinny production, like the first Stone Roses album. Although, of course, the first Stone Roses album wasn't supposed to sound like that. But then after that, everything sounded like that. Um, the only hook in the entire album, although I've skipped a bit, um, is from C. Emily Play. But of course, without all the creativity and energy that was in that, obviously, it has to be a sort of wishy washy version. YouTube comment I forgot how psychedelic this album sounds from someone who hasn't heard much music. <laughs> there you go, Leisure. I'm sure. Oh, okay, my guess is you, you, you don't mind this, but you wouldn't listen to it. That's my guess. You're not uh, you're prob yeah, you're probably right. I mean, everything you described there about its its pitfalls is probably anything you can level at pop music. Mm -hmm. I mean, pop music is by definition trendy music. Um, I think it, this has got a bit of a bad reputation because there was some expectation around Blur for some yeah. reason at the time, yeah. uh, and it didn't really meet those expectations. And Damon Albarn has said that. Um, this was not a good recording. It wasn't a pleasant experience mm -hmm. because they were trying to satisfy the label, and the label had were trying to get them to fit some some things in some sound. You know, they were, they wanted them to sound like other popular things. Sort so of it thing. wasn't even so just like all the other bands that was the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nobody um, wanted to sound so, like that. I mean, we're at the end of the the Manchester thing with Stone Roses and yeah. Twisting My Melon Man and all that crap. The um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you've got uh, are we into grunge era? No, because I I hear some grunge sounds in there. It's sort of like on the guitars. Don't know. Yeah, well, it's it's indie, isn't it? It's, you know. Yeah. Um, but actually, I was, again, I was I was pleasant. I was actually pleasantly surprised. I mean, there are some forgettable songs on there, but this is a nineties pop album. What what year is it? Ninety one. Oh, it is ninety one. Yeah. It's weird to me. It sounds like eighty nine. I suppose there isn't that much difference, but the, in my head that's like a big change because it's so wishy-washy and and and, and reverby. But it's their first album, man. It I is mean, the first, yeah. You yeah. can't you can't judge it on. I mean, we've we've reviewed generally when we review an album, a first album, it's because it's surprisingly good. Yeah. Um, but then there are the albums where the first album is pants, uh, and it sort of. It's good to juxtapose it against the next album, which was actually pretty good. It's a lot um, better, yeah. I, I, I don't think this is in that category. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's it's not an amazing triumph for Blur, but it's a 90s album with some decent enough songs on there, like um, She's So High, um, Sing, There's No Other Way. I mean, that's that's three songs. That's enough for a 90s album. <laughs> and uh, you know, I mean, what 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 more do you want? Um, Actually, to be fair, I'm I'm looking at the track list of Modern Life is Rubbish. I don't remember any of the songs. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's 
Maybe I I've mean, got this wrong. I don't our, know. our experience, I, I think we give Blur a bit of a pass in the past, <laughs> simply because they're not Oasis, and there's a bit of a Sid Barrett thing going on. They've obviously taken Sid Barrett as a bit of an influence. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are Sid fans. It's, I mean, obviously, yeah. it's, it's all about. Um, so they get down. a bit of a pass, but at the end of the day, they are a pop band. Um, well, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, that's what it's meant to this be. This is just yeah. this is just Blur without the. I mean, I don't think Damon Albarn, Albans found his feet here. Um, so it, it's without the personality, really. Um, yeah, there is no think, personality on this album. Yeah, yeah. The band's there, but the personality's not quite there. Um, but, as I say, it's their first album. It's yeah. what you expect from a first album. All you've got to do is make a bit of a, a name for yourself on the first album and have a single. Yes. I mean... And it kind of succeeds on that front. The problem with that is, I mean, what I would consider when they got it right, and what everyone else considers when they got it right, is different. <laughs> because looking at it, I think it's actually Park Life where they get it together. And a lot of that is very memorable. You know, that's the best mm-hmm. I can say about it, but that's, it's very memorable. Mm-hmm. And then you've got... Uh, but this this is obviously not as good as Park Life, but I mean, we're talking about the worst albums ever. <laughs> You know, this isn't. I don't think this like is the worst album ever. Wedding it's, album. Yeah. It's I mean, all right. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, once I realised what we should be doing with this video, this isn't actually the right. This is just something I don't like. Yeah. And then you got the Great Escape, which is better than Park Life, but I still don't like it. And um, but that's I think that's their peak for people. I think is the Great Escape. Then you've got the self self titled, you know, song two. And all that as well, and I don't like that either. That's that's still really sneering. I mean, you can hear the music better, <laughs> if you see what I mean. But um, it's it's what comes after that. I think it's pretty good. Thirteen. It's much more depressing music because I think he's split up with the what's her face from Elastica. Uh, I don't know anything about any of them. Oh. Right. Um, Although, so, uh, actually, does Alex James own a farm now or something like that? Yeah, he makes cheese, uh, that, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. that's all I know. <laughs> um, but I think 13... Well, it's, it's, it's like, it, is, it is like Phil Collins having a divorce. Right. And there's more energy on that album <laughs> than the <laughs> earlier stuff. There you go. It's as good as Phil Collins' solo albums. Mm. Okay. Um, anything else to say about Leisure? Nah. Uh, it's one poo. Because I don't like it, and I don't want to listen I, to I'm it. I'm going to give it three poos. Three poos. Quite different to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of Phil Collins, <laughs> this one was also a mistake. Okay, testify. Okay, I chose this deliberately as the absolute what I thought was going to be the Nadir of 2002. I just chose the year. I thought that's going to be his worst stuff, and I'm probably right, but it makes no difference. Um. Because we've already done a Phil album before, we, it's this is completely redundant. It's just more. It's just more of him with these songs, and there's nothing there. Bored. Don't care. <laughs> you know, one, he's one of the most talented musicians in the business. He, you know, that amazing drummer. It isn't just about being a drummer. It's about being a musician, isn't it? You know. Um, had, well, he's back to the drum machine on this, isn't he? It's definitely it's a drum machine. Yeah, you can tell it's programmed by someone who is a drummer, but yeah. why the why isn't he playing it? He wouldn't be able to play for much longer. <laughs> but it, I mean, he had gargantuan success with banal middle of the road pop. And if he hadn't, maybe he'd still be playing. Well, he wouldn't still be playing, unfortunately. But you know, he would have done something different. <laughs> I can't remember any of it. Uh, I mean, at least we could take the piss out of Suss's studio because it was a word he made up. There's anything like that on here. I can't remember the songs. And he did this after the Tarzan thing and before another Disney thing. Mm. I didn't realise he did two Disney things. Mm. And that's that's <sighs> that. <one. laughs> I mean, what, uh, why, why did I even pick this? Um, for nothing. Yeah, I mean, I, I am I'm confused by this <laughs> uh, because it is widely considered as pants. Mm. Um, but I don't understand if you like any of his other stuff why you wouldn't like this. Exactly, it's, it's it makes just no bland. difference. 
Yeah, it, yeah. you could review any of his albums and we would say exactly the same thing. Yeah. Um, so is this badly reviewed? Yeah. Oh, okay. They've badly, really badly performed as well. Oh, see. Yeah, so I think it was a sort of I've won an Oscar for Tarzan. Uh, so now I've got to have another go at an album. It took him two years to write this. <laughs> it sounds like he's put his bossing over on his keyboard on and then just made up some stuff in an afternoon. Oh, yeah. That's what it sounds like. Unbelievable. Yes. I did. Yeah, it's. What can I say? It's one of the most enjoyable Phil Collins albums I've listened to. <laughs> I've listened to two. Yeah, and <laughs> sort of. The same. Yeah. Well, this doesn't remind you of the terrible teacher we had. No. So that's a thing. Yeah, because it hasn't got one of those songs on there. I mean. Yeah, there's no. I mean. At least his big songs had some kind of, you know, melody that is memorable. <laughs> exactly, yeah, you can remember there's, them. There's not, there's not a lot extent. on it, yeah. Yeah. There's the one where he's saying, you know, um, and something, something, da da, mm -hmm. I'm back again. At least I can remember that. That's not much to remember, but at least I remember that. <laughs> I can't remember, but, I can't, <laughs> you know, this is nothing. I've actually. The thing is, if, if you're saying this is a truly terrible album, what you're saying is Phil Collins is is produces truly terrible music. Phil Collins, the solo artist. Yeah, that that's the weird thing, and but there's so many people that like it, and he's so talented, and it, it I, I, there's nothing there. <laughs> you know, there should be someone in their bedroom who thinks they're a musician. I've made these great songs. You want to listen to my album? And no one cares at all because it's nothing. That's what it would be like. And he's one of the biggest solo artists of all time. <laughs> he's he's huge. Um, what I've done, I've had to, I've put here put on the start of "Don't Get Me Started" because I knew I wouldn't remember it because we have oh, to actually that's hit the politics bit, isn't it? It's yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, I need to know the melody because I won't remember it. So I'm going to put it on there. Really, it's really quite blatant and jarring. Just that. A, don't get me started on the politicians. It's like Christ. I, I mean, mean, doesn't he? The, the music's so sort of airy and fairy, and then the lyrics are like a sledgehammer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no subtlety, what, what, whatsoever. Yeah, I know. And and this is you know. He wrote the drum part to "In the Cage." You know, he, he's on in Brand X. <laughs> I mean, if if Bill Booth had made a, 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 an album of singing, would, is, would this would be what he would like, be like? Or maybe he would sound like Louis Armstrong or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's an it's an enigma. That's the thing I don't. I, there is something that I don't get. And obviously, lots of people like it. A lot of people like it. And okay. Um, Another YouTube quote. Music of Phil Collins has helped me several times. Helped me to hold my head up high. So it's... it mean, I don't know what that means, but it means a lot to people. It's not like that... It's, it does, it, doesn't it? I mean... Yeah. Fair, fair play to them. They found something that yeah. can help him hold his head up high or her head up high. Yeah, so it isn't just that it's 80s and disposable and people bought it and listened to it and put it, up, put it away. People... Feel the emotions of the politicians. Yeah. Uh, I think that, well, the title track must be about the woman he's just split up with for like the fourth time or something. I think his third wife, who's like a, she she was like twenty when he was like fifty or something. And that's it. <laughs> it's one poo. Yeah. Because we shouldn't have talked about it at all. There was no point in talking about it because it's nothing. It's not funny, it's not um, annoying, it's not anything. It's nothing. You could have it on or not have it on and the state would be the same. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we were to do it properly, which albums would we actually do? I, that's the thing, it's very hard to think of. I think yeah. we got it right with Anvil and the Wedding Album, but not Blur and Testify. So I, I don't, maybe we should get people to suggest... And after we've done something else, we'll we'll do another one. Yeah. Not too many albums. 
Maybe I think four is about right. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Which is me. Mm. Thank you very much. So yeah, let us know what you thought of that video. Mm. Yeah.